Hello everybody, I'm Tony Pellegrino and this is a live tech talk that we're doing for June 15th, 2022. Thanks for joining me. Um, we've got a whole bunch of stuff to talk to you about today. And uh, if you're not familiar with this program, it's where we get to talk about your favorite subject and mine, jeeping. So uh, today we've actually got um, several different topics we're gonna cover. We're gonna talk about tire carriers, air up options, uh, we're going to recap the last couple of trips that I've taken and uh, we're going to talk about trail food and uh, several other things related to all of those topics. So uh, stay tuned and, and we'll get to uh, some of these things as we go along here. Um, let's go on over here. You can always type in a comment and uh, somebody will come back later on and answer it. If you include as much information about your question as possible, then we'll go ahead and try and get that answered for you. Um, we are still in a good inventory position, so um, orders are shipping very quickly. So if you need product, we're one of the few companies that can deliver it right away. So um, I encourage you to just order it online or call in. Um, the third Friday of each month, we do a Jeep night all over the country. Um, it started here in Simi Valley with our own, and uh, we've got lots of them happening. Check our Facebook page, and it'll list several of our ambassadors we've got all over the country to uh, see if there's one near you. I'll give you a quick update on our Bowtie TJ. Um, this has been stretched to an LJ now. It just came back from the paint shop and we're assembling the rest of the armor on here. It's really turning out nice. We just got a full LJ cage installed. Um, we've had the corner guards polished because we're gonna take it back to the paint shop and uh, do our paint scheme across the doors and the corner guards. So um, Lee right there in the picture is mounting the flares. Uh, we have installed our brand new tail lights so um, just you know, getting the rest of it together. We've got the new seats coming for it from PRP. So um, you can see we've got a brand new set of Mickey Thompson Baja bosses on there, um, as well as you know the whole new frame section. And we've even put in a brand new inner fender piece here um, as part of this install. So um, look forward to seeing this. And uh, we're gonna post a whole bunch of pictures in the gallery of this this build here um, there you can see that inner fender piece and uh, there's the flare that got installed so really really looking quite nice and uh, one more shot with the tail lights on um, you can see how that whole tailgate everything's just mirrored back there it's really nice looking all right um, back to um, if you're not familiar with our website you can shop by vehicle you can shop by the product category We've got a ton of accessories, our, our galleries where you can see each of the builds in great detail. And then under company, the first drop down is Tech Talk, where we've got a whole bunch of resources for you, PDFs you can download and other things. Make sure that you are subscribed to our newsletter. That's going to be really important. That's down at the bottom. And uh, I also want to show you that our phone number is right there at the top of the page. So if you can't find what you're looking for, just call. We've got a whole team of people over there to um, help you find what you need. All right, um, we did just uh, introduce some brand new shirts. Um, this one down here is one of my favorites. And uh, these are a limited time, uh, limited supply. So what we do is we print them. When they're sold out, they're sold out. So um, I always encourage you to, to get the latest and greatest uh, style Gen Ride Apparel. Um, we, we're also focusing on tire carriers for this episode. So um, we're, gonna, we're gonna go into a bunch of detail on this and uh, talk all about it. Uh, from time to time, we do offer some specials on those. So you wanna check our website and uh, see if we're running any specials on them. This is the best tire carrier on the market. And we're actually gonna flip around. I've got our Aftershock JL right here and uh, go over a bunch of the features on our tire carrier. All right, let's talk about the Genrite tire carrier. This is a four point mounted system to your vehicle, each point being 
urethane or rubber isolated. So um, that keeps it from rattling. Uh, it's very solid. This also acts as protection for the back of your vehicle. This can hold up to a 42 inch tire. We've got a 40 in here for today. And one important thing that I wanna tell you about is this mount right here can be moved from this upper position to the lower position and that moves the tire down three inches. That gives you a little bit more visibility out of your rear window, uh, but it does drop your, tire, your ground clearance um, and your departure angle. So right now I run mine in the highest position for the best departure angle and uh, it also relocates the license plate, the camera, the third brake light, um, all to the back. And uh, the wires run through the tubes, really nice setup. This does use two pins to um, hold this closed. And the pins have a little safety latch on them, or you can press this out and actually use like a luggage lock on here and, uh, or a hitch pin lock so that nobody can enter your tire carrier without your permission. So you just pull these two pins out and then the tire carrier will open up. It has a little bit of resistance on it so that it's not just swinging free. All right, so you can see as you swing this open, there's a little bit of tension still on the hinge side and this allows the tire carrier not to swing freely so that um, it doesn't close on you by accident. We also have what we call a stop lock. So right now, I have this in the up or locked position so that it will not lock because maybe I'm on level ground and I just want to get in and out of here. This you can turn and now as I pull the tire carrier, you can see this drop down and it locked in. So now that will stay open regardless, right? Now what you don't want to do is forget about that it's locked and try and close it. Um, it could damage this. So to open it, you just uh, wiggle the tire a little bit and pop it up. And there you go, now it's up and I can close this. Um, you can also see before I close it that we've got um, our race radio antenna wired in here with a cool little mount that hooks on. And I wanna point out that there's a large Acme thread here with a quick release. And this is what holds our tire or our whole entire wheel in here. Um, this is universal. So it doesn't matter what bolt pattern it is, it doesn't matter anything, this will fit whatever you have and work perfectly. So you just tighten this up, you wanna make sure that the tire is sucked all the way into the carrier cage. That helps to support the entire weight of the tire itself. And uh, this has a maximum capacity of 180 pounds. So um, your tire wheel, if you wanna you know, put a toe strap or maybe a gas can or something on here. Um, you can do that, but you cannot exceed 180 pounds. So that's what this thing's rated for. Um, and it, it'll hold uh, a 42, 14, 50, just fine inside here. You will have to take the lugs and line it up with the tube back here and just fit it in and then it'll, it'll suck right in. So really nice setup, super easy to use. Um, and you just close it up. It, it, you shouldn't have to lift it or do anything. You just close it like so, and then you can put the pins right back in. And you can see these pins are on little cable leashes, and that just prevents you from losing them. And if you've already got one of our tire carriers, you can order the pin with the leash um, off of our website and update yours. Um, and again, these have that little locking style thing here. And, uh, but these really do a good job of just staying in. They don't vibrate loose, they don't fall out. And uh, again, a really nice tire carrier um, that will help to protect the back of your Jeep. You know, if you're backing up, maybe you don't see a tree or a pole or something, that will hit this first instead of the back of your Jeep. Or if somebody on the trail is, you know, not paying attention and rolls up into you, they're gonna hit this instead of the back of your Jeep. So it happens all the time, I know, sounds funny, but um, yeah, great way. Now, the other thing I was gonna mention is that you might've seen is if you're not running a spare and you want a little bit of extra storage for your Jeep, we make a small cargo rack that fits in here when the tire's out. And then you can carry your firewood, your propane tank, uh, maybe your portable toilet, anything that you don't want on the inside of your Jeep, you can put back here 
and uh, really works nice. So we've got lots of options for this. Um, check it out when you get a chance. I think you'll really like it. I wanna share with you guys a recap of both our track, uh, which is an Overland style event that we went on with Yukon. And then um, I also went to the Bantam Jeep Festival, which is great back in Pennsylvania. So um, let's take a look at some of the pictures. And uh, we're gonna start out with the Yukon Adventure Trek number two. This is the second one that they've done. And uh, I missed the first one, but I was able to make this second one. Um, here's the group. It was uh, 20 of us in 14 vehicles. The, the trip started out just outside of Park City, Utah. So a beautiful area. If you've never been to the open space of Utah, you're missing out. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, actually, on the trip, I was going to point out, we had uh, Ian Johnson, uh, John Herrick from Crawl Magazine, Jeep and Gypsy. We had a couple of 4,400 racers, um, in addition to myself and Alex. So it was really a, a nice group of people. It started out with us leaving Genrite in Simi Valley and driving to Park City. And part of the reason I'm talking about this is because I want to demonstrate the road worthiness of our EXS suspension. It actually applies to our Elite and our Tracer, but any Genrite suspension, I always build it. So not only is it good off-road, but it's great on-road. So we, we had no problem driving over 750 miles to get to the start of our event. And uh, the, the, the Jeep drives perfect on 40 inch tires. So we want to prove to everybody that that's totally possible. This map here shows our track for the first day. And um, this was quite interesting. We went up over 10,000 feet a few times and uh, it, it was a, a great back country. You can see there's no towns or anything around. We are in the middle of nowhere. Um, then we have day two, also way out in the middle of the state and uh, beautiful country. Um, we ended up camping here um, near what was a little creek. And uh, then the last day going from there all the way over to uh, Moab, Utah. So um, pretty cool. We, uh, we had a very nice time. And uh, again, we were doing about 150 miles a day. So um, really worked out pretty good. All right, then when the trip was over, we uh, drove from Moab all the way back. Uh, again, about 800 miles and uh, no problem. Jeep runs great. Um, keep in mind, you know, when you're coming um, across the 70 from Moab, the speed limit's 80. Most people are going 90. So, um, you know, easily on a Jeep with 40s, you're able to do that, so. Um, as part of our trip, we stopped by and saw um, one of our dealers, Dixie Four Wheel Drive in St. George, Utah. And uh, there you can see, I've got my Jeep fully loaded um, and uh, it's, it's ready for the trip. We did this on the way there. So lots of uh, equipment in there and um, this dealer is also capable of installing all of our suspensions. So they've, they've done several of these installations and um, they were doing one while we were there. So we got to check it out and see the progress. Anyways, a great shop if you're looking to have your Genrite products installed. Okay, so um, on the road, as we showed you near Park City, um, there was snow in the mountains. So that, that was awesome. Obviously, you know, beautiful blue sky back there and uh, just working our way over toward the beginning of the trip. When we got there, we were greeted um, by Neil himself from uh, Yukon Gear and Axel and uh, handed out a bunch of their uh, swag, so to speak, um, for everybody that was going to be on the trip. Pretty cool. And uh, then, you know, we stepped outside, beautiful uh, sunset. Um, with a couple of the vehicles there and uh, getting ready. We, we were having our uh, driver's meeting and stuff to take off the next morning. Then uh, we got out on the trail. We had, this is, we had just aired down and started. We crossed over a really nice river flowing. Um, th this was as beautiful as Yellowstone or Rocky Mountain National Park easily. And there was nobody around. We had the entire area to ourselves. So um, great area, 
and uh, obviously look at that blue sky, it's beautiful out there. Then we started to climb um, up uh, out of the valley um, into the higher areas. Like I said, we got over 10,000 feet. So um, the whole group of us uh, was going along. So it was pretty fun. Got into the snow. And uh, one of the things I want to point out is how beautifully these Mickey Thompson tires are cleaning out. And uh, I, I was, or I am, continually amazed with how well this Jeep performs. It, it is constantly pleasantly surprising me on its capability. Um, not only from a ride quality and you know its ability to articulate, but the drivability. And uh, we were able to go places that nobody else was able to go because of, of the tires, um, the, the, you know, the size and the vehicle's uh, four wheel drive capability. So, um, pretty impressed and very happy with that. Um, here's another shot of us uh, blazing up into an area. Oh, and here's a great uh, chance to see the, the 200 watts of solar that I have on the roof too that's helping keep my ARB fridge powered. And um, again, you can see the tire carrier and we've got a little trail sack on there. Um, so, you know, the, again, the Jeep's ability to um, perform in this kind of a condition is just amazing. And again, you can see the tires are completely, the, the tread is clean and cleared out, which is super important when you're trying to uh, off-road like this. We, uh, we, each day we had uh, what we call a tailgate lunch. Everybody comes over, fixes their own sandwich, and uh, it was really quite nice. That's Ian and one of the other gentlemen getting a sandwich. Um, then we're back on the trail. Um, again, just beautiful territory out there. Um, we got Jeep and Gypsy behind us. And you can see there's a variety of vehicles. There's a Toyota, a Dodge Ram, um, everybody outfitted for overlanding. So pretty, pretty cool. What else we got here? Oh yeah, there was a few river crossings and um, you can see that the Jeeps got pretty muddy. So we were doing quite a few of these uh, throughout the day. And, uh, you know, again, the, the Jeep's just performing perfectly and we were out there just having a lot of fun. Here we are here, you actually, you can see uh, my, the small Vision X uh, driving lights that I've got on here. And uh, Jeep's a little more dirty, we're, we're further into the trip, but uh, still moving along. Like I said, we did about 150 miles a day. Um, this was night two camping, um, everybody, hanging out, uh, eating their dinner, you know, and uh, really just enjoying socializing. We typically got in to camp around five or six o'clock, so we had time to set up. Um, they cooked us uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, so it was really nice. All we had to do is set up and, and grab some food, and then we were able to sit by the fire and hang out. So um, pretty nice. I can tell you the first night was a bit cooler. We were at a much higher altitude, and uh, both Alex and I slept with all our clothes on, including our jackets inside our sleeping bag, and we're still a bit cold. So um, yeah, it, it, you just gotta be ready for that kind of uh, change in temperature and that range um, when you go on a trip like this. So to me, that's just part of the adventure and part of the fun. Here, oh, here's a good example of them cooking for the whole group. Um, they had one of these skillets. Um, this one was propane fired and it, they had a heck of a burner on the bottom of this thing and they were able to cook up large quantities of food real quick. Up. <laughs> this, this is the, the great example of the variety on a trip like this. Um, we encountered, the, this, this, the road was filled with cows and uh, the cowboys herding them uh, kind of got them over to one side so that we could squeak by and uh, we were told to keep all the jeeps as tight as we could so the cows couldn't get in between the jeeps and uh, there were lots of babies and let me tell you these little guys they were noisy they were making all kinds of noise um you know normally i think of an animal like this as being kind of quiet but um boy they were they were definitely um raising heck that day so but a lot of fun and you know beautiful countryside again um, look at the rocks in the background here. I mean, the, the views we had, um, and again, you know, if you haven't 
been in the center part of Utah. It is absolutely beautiful out there. And there's tons of roads. And even my GPS on my Jeep showed a lot of these um, fire roads and stuff. So um, I think this, we were just about over to um, the dinosaur like National Monument and uh, beautiful area. We, we took a tour there and stuff, but um, nice group. There was a gladiator there, you know, fully outfitted with all of our stuff from Mickey Thompson. So that was kind of cool. And then uh, here we are back on the road. So, you know, again, reinforcing what I was saying earlier, you know, you can take a Jeep like this, you know, go cross country on an overland trip and then hop right back on the highway and uh, haul. So, um, you know, just, just reinforcing its road worthiness. All right, now we're on to uh, Bantam. So if you've never heard about this event, it's held here at Cooper's Lake in Bantam, Pennsylvania. Um, it's an old event and it's really built around the history of Jeep and how it came to be through um, the first ones being built for the military. So um, it's a beautiful setting. I mean, look at this uh, grass that we're parked on. I, I was there um, to share a booth with Mickey Thompson and our, our ambassador Summer came over with her Jeep that's uh, all loaded up with Genrite product to uh, help me uh, work the booth and talk to people. Um, it is the Bantam Jeep Heritage Festival. And this, this was part of a military encampment right across from us where um, they bring these older Jeeps and everybody comes out. You've seen the Civil War reenactments. Well, these guys were, were doing one like this. It's pretty cool. Um, they're super into it in the, the old Jeeps and trailers and stuff are in beautiful condition. These guys have restored them or taken care of them. And uh, behind that is a, a museum. I'm gonna maybe show you a picture of that. Back to like the open area. So this is somebody's big farm and uh, you can see the trees around the edge of it, um, of which there's trails out there and stuff. But the vendor area is probably, you know, 10 times this big. Um, you know, just beautiful country, nice blue sky. So we had great weather out there. Here's a good example. So this is, you know, basically I just turned around and here's a, a driving course and then an obstacle course out there. Just on the grass. Again, super nice, gives all the participants something they can go and do. Um, there's a close up of the obstacle course. So they had some big tires you could drive through, some rocks, they had a big mud hole, little hills. So um, if you're a new driver or just wanna go out and have some fun, you can get out there and uh, see what your, your vehicle is capable of. Uh, back to the booth. And uh, you know people were starting to show up Okay, this is really cool. So one night during this, and I think it was Friday night, they took over the entire little town area. And for as far as you could see, there was Jeeps, and there's, there's more behind me when I took this picture. And then everybody is walking up and down, checking out the Jeeps, socializing. Uh, all of the little restaurants were open, so um, you could get something to eat and cruise around. Um, just a really nice environment. I, I don't see something like this happen at very many events. So this is pretty darn cool. And by the way, this used to be the biggest event of the entire you know year for Jeeps uh, before Jeep Beach came around. So this held the, uh, the Guinness Book of World Records for the highest attendance so and, and, and most Jeeps to show up. So pretty pretty darn cool. Um, we had we had Alan Alvarez and Gary Henderson. Uh, two guys that did our Real Hammers experience uh, pre-run uh, just before King of the Hammers last January. And uh, these guys came out with me um, and uh, both finishers of that, that event. So it was pretty cool. Um, but it was great to see both of them. Alan's from Delaware. Gary's from uh, Washington State. So I was quite surprised to see him back here in Pennsylvania. But nonetheless, they were happy to see each other and happy to see me. Summer, our ambassador from Virginia, uh, was putting a new windshield sticker on and quite pleased with it. So always good to see her smiling. Um, again, another shot of the vendor area as people were starting to come in and uh, you know a lot of activity going through there. Um, Chantel Kern um, is 
the founder of Topless for Tatas that's held out at Roush Creek. I hadn't seen her in a while, and I certainly hadn't seen her brand new 392 JL. So um, I snapped a quick picture with her. And then this little area, everybody was gathering. They were going to do the Barbie Jeep races down this hill. Um, and, you know, just shortly after I took the picture. And uh, that was a pretty cool thing. Obviously, it was a big crowd pleaser. So uh, it was packed by the time the races started. But again, a really cool thing. And uh, by the way, this is also just general parking for everybody that's coming over to the event. And then back in those trees, they had different levels of trails that you could go run. So as a participant, there was tons of stuff to do. I thought this was super cool. Um, this is one of the historic vehicles that was there on display. And, uh, you know, Bantam was um, early on in automotive history, even before Michigan. And uh, this was one of six vehicles like this that was ever built. And uh, really beautiful condition. They were out cruising around. So I snapped a quick pic. There was on-site camping as well. Um, so this, this is just a small piece of how big the camping was um, there at Cooper's Lake. So um, a, lot of, a lot of people who came to this event did camp on site, but there was some nearby hotels and stuff. And then this is that building I was telling you about that had all the history of Jeep inside of it. And uh, I took a bunch of pictures that I posted on Facebook, but um, there, there's a whole bunch of cool stuff inside here. Uh, beautifully restored vehicles and uh, just kind of walk you through the whole history of how it came to be starting in Bantam. Back to the obstacle course. Now you can see some Jeeps out there um, cruising around. And uh, those back over here is where the run lines left from. So that was kind of cool too. Um, so anyways, lots of activity. And uh, again, just looking out toward the, uh, the Barbie Jeep race hill over there. Um, across all the vendor booths. All right, next thing we're gonna talk about is trail snacks, kind of trail food, right? Um, you guys have heard me talk about cooking a manifold burrito. You can see one here in the picture. You just wrap it up in aluminum foil, a frozen burrito. You throw it on there. An hour later, that baby's cooked to perfection. And uh, nothing quite like having a warm meal out on the trail. Well, I'm going to give you a couple other examples of things you can do. And by the way, we've cooked all kinds of stuff on the manifold, lasagna, soup, um, just, just about everything. We've hot dogs, all kinds of stuff that we've had on there. So um, I've even had ribs, believe it or not. So yeah, anything you can put in foil and throw on there, it's going to heat it up just perfect. So now what we're going to talk about is the walking taco. Now, if you've never heard about that, it, I think it's absolutely cool. So you take a bag of chips, whatever size or appetite you have. Uh, my preference is Fritos, but for today's demonstration, we're gonna use some uh, Doritos. And uh, the first thing you do is you break up the chips. You just kinda smash them a little bit um, so that you can get them on a spoon. And then you're gonna open this up and you're gonna add some taco meat, a little pico de gallo, some cheese, oh, sorry, some lettuce and some cheese. And uh, we got some squeezed guacamole and squeeze sour cream. So lots of good ingredients. And you just mix a little of that in the bag and close it up, shake it up, and uh, you got yourself a walking taco. Eat it with a spoon or a fork, and trust me, this is delicious. And if you do it right, you can eat right over the bag, so it's recycling anything that falls off your spoon back into the bag. So you never drop anything on the ground. And uh, this will be a hit with your family and friends. Uh, trust me. Um, in our case, we actually bought some pre-prepared taco meat and pico de gallo. So um, that just makes doing this that much easier, right? You just warm the meat up and you're ready to go. So um, when you get a chance, try that out. I guarantee you it will be a hit. All right, for this next part, what we're gonna talk about is air compressors and how to fill up your tires, run air tools, any, anything air related. And uh, I'm gonna go through a bunch of options with you and then I'm gonna show you what we chose to do, okay? Because there's some really cool things now available that um, I think you're gonna like. First off, let's, let's talk about the basics, right? You can do 
a 12 volt air compressor that is mounted in your vehicle or can be portable that clips to the battery. And um, they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Everything from a 30 or $40 little, little unit that you'd use to air up a bicycle tire, which could air up a, a car tire, um, to something a little nicer that's higher volume, to something like this that puts out a high volume and is 100% duty rated, to something like a power tank where this has the ability to rapidly fill up tires through compressed gas that then comes out and is able to be able to run power tools or air up your tires. It runs through a regulator, so you set the pressure that you want it to go to, but a great solution, also portable, right? So if you need to walk 10 Jeeps back to help somebody reseat a tire, that's a great option. You're not gonna have an air hose that long, or maybe you're gonna have to back up if you've got it mounted in your vehicle and somehow get near that vehicle to reseat a tire. So uh, power tank is definitely one of those things you consider. Um, this is a little bit larger, this is the 15 size. We, there's also a 10. If you get the 10 pound size, that's, that's considered to be about a $600 package. Um, you look at something like this, this is also about $600. And then um, I'm gonna show you an add-on that we did to this that allows it to air up and down all four tires at the same time. So we've got some great stuff to uh, show you in that regard. Now, let's start here. Um, what we did was we took that ARB twin or dual compressor and um, we bought the ARB mount that puts it underneath the passenger seat in our JL. And uh, that's the first step to this next kit that I'm gonna show you that's made for, by a company called Made for Rocks and it's called Rocks or Road. And that's it, it's a Bluetooth initiated system or enabled system. It's a Bluetooth enabled system that allows you to control or set your aired up or aired down tire pressure. So let's take a look at that in more detail right now in the vehicle. All right, so we left the seat out to give you a undercover look at what we've got going here. And I'm gonna kind of go through the process with you. So the first thing we did was we ran the wire harness from the compressor, which is here, all the way up to the battery. This has to directly connect to the battery because this dual compressor pulls 30 amps. Okay, that's a lot of power. If you don't know anything about power, that's a lot of power at 12 volts. Next, you connect all of the lines from the kit. They're all labeled, which is really nice. And these are high temperature Department of Transportation or DOT approved push lock kind of hoses. And uh, these are great. So this is the little panel that mounts to the side of the seat frame through some little quick connect pieces, which is really clever. And uh, this is a regular air chuck, just like you'd have at home on your air compressor. And this sits just right on the side of the seat frame. Um, we're gonna show you what it looks like on the other side, but this allows you to connect the hoses. So from here, you get, you get one of these bags for each side and you just let the hoses come out. This little manifold plugs in just like that. And it's got a 60 pound, so 60 PSI blow off as a protection to make sure that uh, you don't get distracted and walk away and, and forget about airing up your tires. These are made to hook onto your Schrader valves and they're really nice. You just connect it and you slide that forward and it's on. So now it won't let any air out. Um, it's completely tied to the system. And then we're gonna come over and do the same thing in the rear. And as you probably guessed, you do this on the other side and then you're airing up all four tires at the same time. So, or down, which is, which is one of the cool features of this system. So uh, let's walk around to the other side and check it out. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing where we're gonna take the air lines out of the bag. We're gonna plug it in to the manifold. So now you can see that mount that I was talking about on the other side, how it's mounted to the seat frame. 
but this side has some switches and the controller here. So we're gonna go ahead and put these on the two wheels. There we go. There we go. All right, now I've got the app open on my phone and uh, this is going to show us where everything's at. So as soon as I turn it on, and uh, now you can see the Bluetooth activated module, which has some logic built into it, um, shows that all of my tires are at 28 PSI. All right, so by simply touching this Bluetooth button, um, it now tied with that and it shows us everything about the tires where we're at. And this is interesting because I've got my deflate pressure set to eight and my inflate pressure set to 22. So you can automatically air up or down by using this. So if we say auto down, hold it for a second. Maybe more than a second. There we go. So now the system is dropping all four tires at the same time. And it'll do this all the way down to eight pounds. And you can see on here, it's, it's already dropped down to 27 pounds. So it's just gonna keep dropping all the way. And it'll stop at probably 10 pounds, just verify and then drop two more to get us to eight. So we've, actually I'm gonna stop this for a second just cause it's kind of loud. Um, we've talked about this before in our tech talk. You want to establish a pressure that you air down to all the time because that way the performance characteristics and what you know to expect from your vehicle is always consistent. So um, it's a great way to get this set. Now, you say, hey, I don't want to use my phone. No problem. You actually just touch these buttons right here on the controller and it will continue to... Um, air up or air down so it's uh it's really nice being able to do this so that that was the manual settings and then there's the auto where it's just like the phone this will now do it exactly how i programmed it in the phone but without the phone so maybe you're on a call maybe something else is going on you just don't want to dig out your phone you can do it this way too so it's, uh, it is nice, and we're gonna stop that again, just cause it's kind of loud. Um, now, in order to air the tires back up, you do need to start the Jeep because the, the compressor draws so much power. Um, and it is also a little bit loud. We don't have the seat in there right now, um, but it would automatically air these tires right back up to 28 pounds and uh, you'd be good to go. So it's a really nice system. And I think, you know, if you're doing a lot of airing up and airing down, you know, before and after the trail, this is a really nice thing to have. It's convenient, it's automatic, um, whether it's you, your wife, your kids, you know, somebody trying to help you do it, it can save a lot of time. Um, you know, and, and let's face it, everybody loves gadgets. So the price tag on this is just about $800 not including the compressor. Remember, you still gotta get that. So that's another 600 for the dual ARB. So um, just gives you an idea. Now, of course, you can still use the little compressor that plugs in your cigarette lighter or attaches to your battery and run around and air all the tires up. Just depends on you know what, what level um, or how often you're using it. So something to consider. I just wanted to show you some options, but this one I'm looking forward to. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is we just updated our runs and events page on our website. Um, you can always go there to check it out. It's an under company. And uh, we've got a few things coming up. Uh, Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion in Pigeon Ford, Tennessee. Uh, Trail Hero in Sand Hollow, Utah. Hump and Bump in Logandale, Nevada. Desert Splash in Parker, Arizona. Um, our own Genrite Turkey Run in Johnson Valley, California and uh, our Gen Right Parade of Lights or Christmas Crawl, whatever you prefer to call it, right here in Simi Valley um, on December 16th. 
So some of our ambassadors do do their own version of that. You're gonna to wanna to check the GenWrite Facebook page and look at events to see if any of our ambassadors have one in your area. Um, you're welcome to join us for any of these events. Uh, certainly you can reach out to uh, Jeff Perkins in our sales department and he will add you to our list to make sure that we know you're coming and uh, basically probably go over some bare minimum requirements to make sure that you're prepared for the particular kinds of trails that we're gonna have out there. So not everybody has to be on 40s. We're happy to, uh, to take people on 35s. Um, we've got our little budget YJ we call four shock that'll be going out to a lot of these events and uh, you know certainly capable of doing all of this stuff it just depends on what trails we want to run so we look forward to seeing everybody out at this stuff Let's see what we got next next this is um, you know we're, we're active on Instagram Facebook and YouTube I want you to turn on your notifications so that every time we post a new product video or a video like this about tech talk um, you get the notification so you can go over and watch it um, that way you'll be sure not to miss any and uh, we'd sure like to have you as one of our subscribers or followers as well so anyways hope you enjoyed this and uh, there's a lot more of them out there so if you're over on YouTube we've got a whole library of these tech talks for you to check out including our seven part terminology series that you'll definitely want to catch thanks again see you soon